341 days ago, our first guest left his late night talk show and moved back to England to drive on the wrong side of the road. He has a new podcast on Sirius XM called This Life of Mine. Please welcome James Corden. <laughs> Good, I was just telling the audience I knew you'd come crawling back. I knew it. I knew it all along. Yeah, no, I know. It's hard. It's hard. Do you hard. miss this at all? Is there anything about it that you miss? Well, yes. It's it's a, it's an adjustment. Yeah. Because, I mean, you we talk about this a lot. We talk about this a lot. How long do you think, how long are you going to... I feel like when the day comes when you say, you know, I'm going to stop hosting this show, I really feel like I'm ready to help you or any other host. Oh, really? Well, yeah. That would be nice. You would no. help me make the transition. It's, it's like when you get out of prison and then exactly. there's an advocate. It's exactly yeah. right. That is exactly <laughs> right because you don't understand. You know, you don't understand how institutionalized you are. Uh, it's extraordinary. <laughs> but it's like you're in. You're institutionalized in a world where you get a standing ovation at the end of every day. Oh, the, and that is yeah. What I've realised is it's really it's really bad for you. <laughs> is it really yeah, bad for you? Really, really bad for you. Why is it bad for you? Well, every day, yeah. to just walk out and Weekdays, people just go. Not there the he is. <laughs> it's like it's uh, honestly, it takes a lot of. So you're it's... telling me that you don't get that anymore? I'd go so far as to say I get the opposite. What because about the kids? You don't demand that they stand and applaud when you come in. From... Nothing. No. I get, I get, I get eye rolls. Uh huh. I get. My youngest daughter is six. She's, uh, she's an, she's an American. Yeah. Right. And she, for some reason, taught, has, is holding on to her American accent. But my old, my, my, in fact, my other daughter's here, but Carrie, who's come with us, and Max, they, they're sort of, they're transitioned slightly easier. She is like. Talking like Samantha from Sex in the City. She's like, <laughs> she, I'm not joking. I mean, she's like, oh my God. So, like, so I'll come home and no, I don't get a standing ovation. Uh, like, all yeah. I'll get is Charlotte going, it's raining again. Oh. Like that. Yeah, yeah it's it's sad that you move it's... them, right? Because you get acclimated to wherever you live and these kids are young kids. And I the, know. And they, they thought we had all this money and now I don't have oh, this money yeah. anymore. <laughs> This is the problem. They thought we had all this money because I had all this money, and now I don't. I'm in a play, and now I don't it's, have. It's like quid now, right? It's or like, whatever they yeah, call it's, it over it's, there. It's, yeah. yeah, and so this trip, actually, me being back here now, we're going to tape some of the Sirius XM show. But this is the first time because the kids get like two weeks off at home for Easter break. So this is the first time the kids are coming back to LA uh, and it's a risk yeah. to my wife and I. It is. We've taken like a big, it's a big swing. What are it's you gonna do? How are you gonna handle it? I don't know, it's bad. It's yeah. like, cause you it's even- You have to even... make sure they don't have fun. Exactly. But yeah. we want them to have a nice time, but we don't want it to be like, why did we leave here? Yeah, right. Which mm -hmm. if I'm honest, even I, with this been this beautiful weather. And so me and Jules, my wife, we're looking at the forecast like, oh, we really could do with a bit of rain. <laughs> What do you miss most about the United States? If anything, maybe not. Oh no, I miss loads. I miss I miss loads of stuff. I what do, about I mean... going back to London? Are they like, welcome back? You, they, do they reclaim <laughs> you warmly? <laughs> yeah, I mean, people are very nice. Yeah. But no one believes that I wasn't fired. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'll, like, I'll be in a pub. I'll be in a pub or something, and people will be like. I'll be like, I'll be like, yeah, no, well, my son, you know, I'll, I'll, they'll be like, so why'd you come back? And I'll be like, well, because Max, is, you know, finished sixth grade and we really wanted him to have a relationship with his grandparents and we were just really thought, so they went out and then people will honestly be like, you don't have to give me that, that <laughs> it's fine, mate. Like, why is you that? You got fired, people? you got fired. Because nobody <laughs> thinks that you would ever leave what is, let's be honest, a cushy existence. Can you get a letter from CBS saying that you've been, you were not fired, that you left a, on I your would, own free will? They don't know what CBS is. Oh. So they'll go, well, that's not a real thing. Yeah. And then I have to tell them what the show was, and then they'll go, hang on, it was on at 12.30 at night. 
that's a ridiculous time to put a TV show on. It sounds like you should just come back because you're never, you know what, you left and they don't accept you anymore and that's that. But this play that you're doing, I am. I'm now doing you're going to be play. in front of a live audience again. It's which quite be the good. pay cut, Jimmy. Let it, me tell maybe you that. So. It is quite the pay cut. Well, you get that applause, you get that standing ovation, hopefully well, at the end. I don't know because it's. A, I'm doing a. It's, I'm doing a very. It's a play. I'm very excited about it, uh, but it's very serious. I've never done a serious play before. Oh, you haven't. Well, yeah, oh, so, so this it's a is, drama. Oh yeah, it's it's actually quite dark. Really? Yeah. So oh. the play is called The Constituent, which is written by a, br a brilliant playwright called Joe Pennehall, who wrote one of my favorite plays I ever saw called Blue Orange. And the play is a very political play. It's about a very timely uh, th thing that's happening to a lot of members of parliament in the UK and perhaps how we're treating them and, and is there room for empathy and compassion in the world of politics anymore. And uh, yeah, no, if anyone's coming expecting a big comedy, they're going to be really perplexed. You know, I think I might have told you this one time, but I was in London years ago before you started yes. doing the show. You here. have told me this, and, and I, I think about it a lot. And I heard that you, I heard about this play, uh, what was it called, One Man, Two Governors. It was in a play was called like, One Man, Two Everybody Governors, said, yeah. oh, it's so great, this guy James Corden is so great. I was like, we gotta go see it. So my wife and I, we went and we bought tickets at the thing, we sat way in the back, and, um, we're, and we're waiting for you to come out, and your understudy was on that I night. know. Well, yeah. But that one, I've always felt bad about that. It yeah. was the first... Would you mind doing that play for us right now? I mean, that would be... Is that you too much what? to ask? No, I, I do. I, 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 I do. We do talk a lot about perhaps doing that play again. Well, that play, One Man, Two Governors, that play was like a big, riotous comedy, a, a big, like yeah. a romp, really. And 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 I was very fortunate in the, the character that I played would, would talk a lot with the audience. And actually, um, every night I would get to bring people from the audience up on stage because there was a part of the play where I had to get them to move some scenery for me. Mm -hmm. So... And that, I used to have great fun with that mm -hmm. all the time. When we went to New York, so the, the play, you know, International Theatre, then it went to the West End, and then we went to New York. Um, I would get to, every night we did that play in New York, there would always be quite amazing people on the show, like, you know, like Gene Wilder came to see it. And wow, crazy that's people, great. Tom Hanks, and like, you know, amazing people would come, and you can't really bring them up on stage because it's could be seen as disrespectful, you know? Yeah. And one night, it was raining. And you remember, you remember when it rains in New York and the raindrops are like quarters? It's like <laughs> everyone is drenched. And Ollie, who was in the play, said, you know who's in tonight? And I said, who? And this was in 2012. I said, who? He said, Donald Trump's in. And he said, he's the only person you could ever bring up stage, bring up on stage, because half the audience don't really like him anyway. So... <laughs> you'll either win with the whole audience or you'll win with half. And I was like, ah, it's not bad. I said, well, I'll see how the audience are doing in the first 10 minutes. And if it feels like, oh, they're not really getting into it as much as we'd like, maybe I'll do it. So anyway, sure enough, the show starts. It's kind of okay, it's, but it's lukewarm, the response. And I just thought, oh, do you know what? I'll do it. I'll... So I went out. He was deep in the auditorium. I'd normally take someone from, like, the first row. And I went out and I grabbed his arm and I said, uh, I said, you're coming up with me. And he was like, oh, and he like, loved it. And I got him up and I said, I said, this is manual labor. This is something you've never done before, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> I fired him at one point because it was when <laughs> The Apprentice was really big and all How this stuff. How does his hair look with all the big wet drops on it? Oh no, I think he doesn't walk in the rain. Oh, no, he, he doesn't, doesn't walk, walk in the rain. The rain doesn't hit him. Yeah, he doesn't walk in the rain. It's like, are you watching Succession? There's no, wow. not a drop. But I'll never forget, we brought him up on stage, I did all this stuff, and, and, uh, and then when, what we'd do when we brought people up, we'd send them into the wings, and our stage manager would always say to them, like, just wait here, you did great, and people would be a bit shell-shocked because they'd just been on, you know, on a Broadway stage, and he'd say, James is going to shout for you to come back, I'll open the door, walk back across the stage and back to your seat. And I said to our stage manager, I said, I'll never forget this, in 2012, I said, what was he like in the wings? And he said, oh, man, it was like he thought he was the president of the United States. <laughs> I promise you that's true. He said he went round to the crew, but he did that thing of, like, shaking their hand, but not in a genuinely, like, grateful way, in a way to be like... You want to know what's weird? This is a big deal for you. He you still know. thinks he's president of the United <laughs> States.
James Corden is here. His podcast is called This Life of Mine. We'll be right back. James Corden is with us. His podcast, which you can hear on Sirius XM, is called This Life of Mine. What does that mean, This Life of Mine? Well, each week, the guests choose a place, a person, a possession, a piece of music, a movie, and a memory which is significant in their life. And there's a lot really, of homework you give the guests. They have it, to come with all true. this. That's true. So they so then each week we will then talk about the guest's life. Uh, and you know, we'll go really back to where they grew up and what happened with those sort of temp poles, if you like, informing where the discussion goes. So it's 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 less, it's kind of pr probably more of a show than it is a podcast or what we've come to know podcasts as being, in that it's a very sort of curated What was show. Dr. Dre's possession that he brought? Dr. Dre's possession was his soundboard. He didn't bring it. It was his mixing board where he said, he, and then he really started opening up and talking about the relationship he's had with this mixing board and the songs that he's made. And then he starts talking about particular songs that he's done. And there was, we asked him for one song that he didn't, have anything to do with, and one song that he did, and I was so interested to know what his favorite song would be that he had worked on, and uh, it was in the club, Fifty Cent. Oh, that was his favorite. Yeah, and I was like, why? And I never saw it coming. I said, why? And he said, that's the song that they used to uh, tune the Beats headphones because it's such a particular bass. The boom, that boom, da da boom. Yeah, bum. they used that. To be, and he'd be like, no, no, it needs more of this, more of that, and stuff like that. So his was amazing. You know, um, Martin Scorsese's possession was like a very particular fountain. No, his bag that's got a fountain pen with ink that you can only get in Japan. Or Kim Kardashian's was a letter that her father wrote her when she was 14 years old. And oh. it was a really amazing moment where Kim Kardashian's person was her mum, Kris Jenner. And we actually, then when Kris did the show, played Chris, Kim, talking about her as her person. And so people really open up a lot when they're talking about things that they love. And you really learn a lot about people. And I'm really, really enjoying doing it. It's You're great here fun. to do a bunch of interviews in the United States. We're going to do some now. We take the show in New York. We take it here in LA. We did, you know, David Beckham and Martin Scorsese and people like that we did in London. So I really just go and then I'll go and, like, we'll tape seven podcasts this week, and then I'll stop in New York on the way back to do Anna Wintour, and then I'll get back to London. How many total have you done so far? We've recorded about 25, and I think oh. about nine have gone out. OK. Yeah. Well, don't ask me to be on the show. OK. Because... I think we have. If I'm... No, you haven't. I think we have. No, I promise you. You I haven't promise, asked me, because I would have said yes. No, you wouldn't. But now that I know I'm not in the top 25... You... Forget about you it. You were... No. I... If you can prove... That you asked me, then I will do it. <laughs> I mean, you probably don't even this, want me to. You obviously don't is, want me to do this it. This is, this, you are gonna regret this so much. You made me so eat a penis much. on your show. I don't think I'm gonna let's regret call, this. Let's call Tracy now, who books the show. Is there really a Tracy, or is this your wife backstage? I'm calling who's Tracy, for, my wife is All asleep right. Oh, in this London. is gonna be great. Now, is Tracy gonna get fired now if, if no, no, Tracy's going to... OK. Let's see. Right. Why is Tracy nude on your photograph? <laughs> she's really nude. She's a... OK. <laughs> Tracy's Trace... not on three, yeah. which is oh, quite what annoying. what a coincidence. You're calling no, somebody... I promise it's you. It's 4 o'clock in the morning over you. there. No, Tracy's here. What were those Tracy's lights in the in sky last Angeles. night, James? Tracy's in the Los Angeles. <laughs> right. we'll what were it those out. lights? We'll, as you people say, we'll sort it out. What were those lights? I don't know. No, I want to know. In England, would they allow lights to go over the town without looking into what they are? No. No. <laughs> but we look at things like this slightly differently because we don't really... No one's made, like, a close encounter set in, like, Reading. Or, uh -huh. you know, Sunderland. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We we expect this of America. Yeah. We need bright lights over America. I know, I know. America. you guys like laughing at us. No, and, we don't laugh. We go, just... it has to happen in America. We need it to happen in America. <laughs> and that's the best thing about America, is the constant optimism in all of it. I is know what we are. Joyous. We are your Florida. That's what we are. <laughs> James Gordon, listen to new episodes of This Life of Mine. Thursdays on Sirius XM. We'll be back with Kim Fields. Ta -da.